Hello and welcome back to the Sports Bubble. Had a bit of an issue there where I uploaded it onto my own personal page instead of the Sports Bubble's page. Um, but it's all back now and we're back ready to go live and chat to you about It's my fault. Yeah, I was trying to take the blame there for Brenton uh, being the senior. Can't allow to do that. Like being the senior member of the Sports Bubble, I tried to do that, but uh, no, he jumped in and took the blame himself. You idiot! But um, yes, we're back live to talk about. This we want to look at the Champions League games, uh, touch on football. We need to talk about what's happened to Sean Cox, the Liverpool fan. Um, and also there's an article in the Daily Express that has been taken down, but it was by Colin, um, where is his stupid second name? Colin M something. Colin, I'll get it when I'm going to talk about him, but it's Colin Maffham. Maffham, I think it is, is how you pronounce his name. We'll talk about Arsenal Wenger and what's going to happen next at Arsenal. Of course, they're playing now uh, live. You'll notice... The Emperor isn't with us, he's at home watching Arsenal in the semi-final, mm-hmm. hoping that they win. I also wouldn't mind seeing Arsenal win the Europa League, it'd be nice for Wenger. And talk about Real Oviedo, and we will also talk about the relegation battle, because it's more or less all that's left to play for, apart from the top four, still still up there for Chelsea to yeah. try and squeeze into. Um, where do you want to start with first? Um, will we go with Wenger? Yeah. Um, seems like <laughs> the appropriate place to start. Um as it came out of the blue, I think, for me, um, was maybe, I mean, we've talked about it before, about, um, I think you and Jake maybe disagreed about, you know, will he go at the end of the season or will he see out this weird two-year contract that he um, he signed last year? Um, <clears throat> but their ploy, I mean, is obviously to announce it now so that well first of all the time to look for the manager and um so that they can sort of win the Europa League as sort of a send off. Yeah, it's probably their best opportunity to do so. They <clears throat> could have done it with the FA Cup a couple of years. Maybe it's I don't know, it's maybe not seen as a big enough trophy to send them off with. Um but I mean fantastic serve to the club first of all, you know, absolutely respect and admire everything he's done. Um just a few question marks over if it was his decision like they say it was. Um, I mean, he's come out, uh, he did come out during the week and say that the timing uh, wasn't his decision. Mm-hmm. Um, and there was sort of uproar about that as in, um, does that basically mean you were sacked, Arson? Um, but he said that it was the timing as in of the press conference um, I don't know if he's sort of been told since he made that statement you better say that we didn't sack you Arson because it sort of throws the whole oh they really respected him they let him go when he wanted thing up in the air then um, uh, to me it looks like he was <laughs> he was sort of told um, at some point this season maybe if it was I don't know if it was last week and all of a sudden the decision was made but he was sort of told uh, listen, Arson, we're gonna look for someone new at the start of next season. Uh, I don't necessarily buy into it that Arson Wenger has turned around and decided that he has had enough of Arsenal. Uh, I know Jake isn't here to defend Arsenal, and so I'm not gonna try and cause controversy or <coughs> debate without Jake being here because I think it's only fair that he he can say what he thinks. But personally, I think that uh, he has likely been nudged. On and told that we're we're going to go because like Arsenal they could end up in the Europe, European uh, Europa League final here, which would be brilliant for them and they could end up winning the trophy a uh, European trophy that's brilliant, but they have been really really subpar this year. That am I right in saying they haven't won away from home yet? Well, they haven't won in two thousand eighteen away from home. Maybe that's more like it, yeah. Or even a point away from home or something <coughs> in two thousand eighteen. It's, it's something daft. They're really really poor and, and that that's like that's a really. For an Arsenal football club, it's really substandard. It's not all just his fault. It's certain the blame shouldn't just be uh, landed at his door. No. Arsenal fingers. I think the players have let him down massively. He's he, uh, he's been unlucky with some injuries too as well. But and not just this season. Not, either. No, not just this season. <clears throat> but I mean, there's been a sort of steady decline, you know, from let's say the mid um, 2000s mm-hmm. to now, um, which is a long time. Where Arsenal <coughs> were winning leagues, competing for trophies, and now <coughs> I don't know if it's fair to say it, it was sort of Wenger's words when he came out and he said, "With 
um, the, about top four as good as the trophy or um, but that seems to be the standard that the club has aspired to since then would that be right like uh, yeah it probably is and you know the teams in around them you know <coughs> Chelsea Man City United first start but also Liverpool like even though Liverpool haven't won a Premier League you know in that time you wouldn't have heard the talk coming out of Liverpool, you know, top four is enough for us. It's good if we get top no. four at the start of a season, even though they hadn't won a league, you know, in, in such a long time. And top four probably would have been good for some of those managers, Brendan Rodgers, for example. But they pushed the league all the way that year. And that's where I think the sort of the difference was post, say, 2004, 2005, when Arsenal appeared to put that mindset in the players within the club and every player that came into it thought at the start of the season you know if we get top four here that's that's good enough for the yeah. manager that's good enough for the club like mm-hmm. as long as we build and then the whole thing with the stadium and um the money it was going to cost and you know financially they're something to look up to as a club but the way they've been run like the way yeah. Arsenal has run the club and the way they've done their finances yeah 100% mm-hmm. but uh, you, I, I'm, get, I'm, I'm just not assuming, but I can tell by the way you're talking that you would be of the opinion, same as me, that maybe Arson stayed five years too long. Yeah. The tide maybe turned in 2000, was it 2005 maybe when United beat them at Old Trafford? They were going to try and win or be unbeaten for 50 games or something, I don't know what it was. And remember, United, remember United beat them then? Rooney scored. Ro- yeah, Rooney scored. Um, but you know, Remember that game when United yeah. beat them and it sort of put a halt to them and and I think from then Arsenal have sort of declined. I know they're into the Champions League final year after that but that was sort of like a, not a fluke but it was sort of like, whoa, like, how did they get here? Yeah, it wasn't, yeah. Whereas two or three years before you'd have been like, no, they fully deserve to be here where they are. Yeah, they're the late in Europe. Like. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think maybe from then you could put, look back to then and say that was maybe when Arsenal Wenger's time and Arsenal was on the decline and maybe then that's when it changed. And from then it's been it's been a slow progress from the fall away and Arsenal to fall away. Like they've been yeah. in the top four for so many years in a row now. But they have fallen away. Like if you looked at any other, you know, European club in round uh, that time that we're talking, uh, you know, around the mid two thousands and uh, you said <clears throat> in 10 years time you know they won't have won another Champions League they won't have won another Premier League mm-hmm. um, do you think they'll have the same manager? no way no not a chance no any of those other clubs don't or wouldn't have yeah. um, the only exception you're talking about is, is Fergie um, until he went but they were winning trophies that whole time mm-hmm. this last season they won a Premier League you know that is you can see then why he was Fergie was there that long instead, um, as many years as he did. But I think you're right, and I would be of the opinion that yes, he, he, he hung on and he won the FA Cups and he won League Cups, did he? I nope. don't know. He won FA Cups, is all he won. Um, and some clubs would be delighted with that, but you know, you can't go in those 10 years from Champions League finals and winning leagues to. Did a ten year period where there's no trophy. Um, no, it isn't. Um, and but it is important. I think that people don't just home in on that. And those ten years, I think when he does leave here at the end of the season and whatever happens to Arsenal in the Europa League, people look back at how good he, his Arsenal teams were when they were winning leagues and how he changed the mindset in English football and. I know he only won three Premier League titles because Alex Ferguson was such a juggernaut and he went on and won 13. Yeah. But, you know, he finally changed how we thought about football, how footballers thought, and he was such a, a visionary in that side, that way. And um, it'll be interesting to see where he goes next. Mm. Um, but Because it appears he is going somewhere. Yeah, I don't think he's quitting. But more, what I should probably will probably worry about, not worry about, but think about more, is who's going to come in. Mm. Um, if I was to tell, if I was to... Hold a gun to your head right now, and you need to give me a decision of a name first in your head. Who's the one that you'd say would take over Arsenal? Well, Jack has sort of convinced us that Jurgi Love is a. He's convinced himself, and he's trying to convince us. Is Neil Don? Uh, basically, from what he said, yeah. um, 
sort of obviously he knows Arsenal better than us and the journalists that follow Arsenal the sort of insiders if you like at the club mm -hmm. um, that's the, the opinion he has but then Arsene Wenger name checked Luis Enrique he did um, in fairness he was asked about him oh yeah okay and he you know some his praises basically um, and then he said uh, just added the caveat that you know he doesn't want to influence the club's decision about who the next manager is going to be the influence he's had over the years, uh, he may not directly influence them, but you know the style of play he's he's introduced and, and held for so long, and you know also the entire management of the club has been down to him basically mm -hmm. and a few others, but um, indirectly you know he has to if if they want to stick with as Gazidis has said this Arsenal way. Um, which Jack talks about on end at times, but it it seems to be important to the Arsenal fans. I mean, I I challenge Jack about it, you know, about what he'd rather play the Arsenal way or win the trophies. Like that, the cut of one with like a manager for two years, three years, um, and they hold that you know very very close to their heart, like this mm -hmm. Arsenal way. So there are some managers who would. Be completely ruled out based on that fact. Diego Simeone is one. Um, Allegri is another. You, you could see Allegri more than you could see Simeone, but yeah. Um, you know, is Vieira and Arteta who's been mentioned? I think it could be Luis Enrique. You do? Yeah. I think it would have been Thomas Tuchel if it weren't for PSG. I mean, he's not going to turn down all the money in the world. And a chance to go and manage PSG, where he, he's going to be competing in the Champions League. They're going to get it right some year soon, just like Man City, or it could be next year, and both of them end up going to the final and it'll be cra class crack. But um, I think Tuchel would have been prime, would have been superb. Okay. Uh, only he, it's, I know that's Sven Mislinstadt, they don't really get along, but I mean, you could probably, you know, as long as it wasn't too horrific, you could probably get past that. But I think it'll be, I don't think it'll be uh, Yogi Lo. I think. He's going to be going to the World Cup. It's a chance he's going to end up in the World Cup final, semi final, anywhere. I know Conte did it at, at, with Italy in the Euros and came to Chelsea. I just I don't think it. Conte was also in, in club management not that long before he took the Italian job. Yogi Lo hasn't been in club management in years. Mm. So I don't think he'll be able to just jump straight into an Arsenal job. And if I was Arsenal, if it wasn't Luis Enrique, um, and you don't want to change the Arsenal way, then it. it Go for someone like Mikel Arteta, and who's been at the club. Someone like Patrick Vieira, who we all know is captain of the club. Go for it and take a punt at it and see what happens. I think they're all right, Arsenal, in the fact that um, it's not going to go catastrophically wrong next year if they took a punt on someone. They're not going to get relegated. All right? They mightn't get Champions League again, but I think financially they're secure enough that they go maybe one or two seasons and then if they're still not challenging the top four and they're sixth or seventh again, um, then they could probably go right. Hang on, we're going to have to really go for this now. And I think they, I think they have a chance where they could really go a little bit of a punt on someone. It'd be bad. It'd be, it would look mad, everyone. But I mean, so go for it. You, you know, ask United fans look, because it's the same situation when Fergie left. Yeah, You're looking at me they, because they went for um, Angry Kids Granda, <laughs> David Moyes. Yeah. Uh, he wasn't united <coughs> way. Like. No, I know, but they took a punt, if mm. you like, and it didn't work out. And they took another punt that didn't work out. And they may have taken another punt that's not worked out. You know, I... I, get, I totally get that. Yeah. But I think Arteta or Vieira would be a better choice for Arsenal than Moyes and even Van Hal had been Van Hal was obviously very successful but he, it just didn't work out for him yeah uh, I think Jose is going to come second here could win an FA Cup I know he's left something to say about that that's an alright season again yeah challenge to go for the league again next year but um, I know I do know what you mean but I, I, I don't know it's exciting time for Arsenal fans I suppose like who would you go for if, if, if you can't get Luis Enrique uh, Vieira or Arteta go for it and see what happens but I don't think that Arsenal are going to have another you know even 8-10 year manager 
No, I don't know if anyone will. But I think they, some of them think that they are, that, that this, you know, certainly Jack thinks that, <laughs> I was trying my best not to imagine his name, but he thinks that, you know, things have been set in place for Jurgen Love to come in. Yeah. Um, because everyone's German. Everyone's <laughs> German. That's not obviously just why, but yes, the style of football. <laughs> Um, yeah. the appointments um, why Ozil stayed all this Plus, is because Yogi Low knows that he doesn't he doesn't have to spend money because he doesn't spend money in Germany he knows Arsenal are going to spend money or yeah apparently or, it's been 50 million is what they're allowed to spend yeah the so, so it's season, all right for him like, which is an absolute drop in the ocean compared to City United Chelsea let's face it even Liverpool are spending more on that oh, yeah, yeah Van Dijk Van Dijk alone costs yeah, more do you know yeah, what yeah. I mean big, um, Virgil. but do you think if Art, I know we've spent a lot of time on this, but I, I think it's important that. Do you think Arsenal can get the right manager in? Say they get the perfect manager in, can they win the league with the players they have? Or no. do you think. They uh, need to get. They need. Right. Now, I heard something today. So, both goalkeepers are out of contract next season. And both are poor. And one of them's ancient. Yeah. Uh, and the other one's Peter Cech. Um. Iron Ramsey's out of contract next season. He's not. I don't think he's going to sign on an Arsenal game. They're depending on who comes in. Wilshire. Wilshire's gone then this season. Santa Garzola, unfortunately, he's just injuries have Play. suffered for him. Yeah, he's gone. Uh, their defense is not great. Um, they have Aubameyang, Mkhitaryan, Ozil, and Lacazette up front. Certainly, that's a class forward line. That's a very, very good forward line. Yeah. Full of talent. Uh, but they've Chamberlain's gone, Coughlin's gone, uh, as I said, Ramsey's gone, Cazorla's gone. So they have Elneny and Jacker in midfield. No, they would need neither of them. Need about seven players, possibly maybe. And that's not because I don't mean just first squad starting players. They probably need a squad seven players to get into the squad. But maybe four or five to have to start straight away. You're absolutely right. Like and Elneny and Jacker, do they both? Do either of them start for City? No, United? No. Chelsea no, Liverpool no, no Tottenham Spurs, no. no. I think chance. I think what Arsenal I said this to Jake a couple of months ago. Um, Arsenal remind me of what happened to Liverpool when Benitez was in his last season. I didn't think I didn't know that Arsenal was going to leave. Like, but it just sort of had that feeling. You key players were leaving, and even big fit characters in the squad were leaving. And it was all falling apart under him, um, and then it all went catastrophically wrong. <laughs> And it's only really like we had obviously that period with Rodgers and Suarez and we were looking at that and it's only we've only got ourselves back now where I think like that season on the Swart Rodgers was amazing, but you didn't know if we're gonna sustain it and go again next year because well we knew where really Suarez was going for a start. Yeah. Uh, and we had a funny feeling Raheem Sterling was gonna follow suit. Whereas it's a little bit different now, I don't have a little bit yet. Whereas that's I think that's where Arsenal are going. So they're gonna instead of waiting for so long how long it took Liverpool to come back, that was two thousand and uh, nine, we're now back in a Champions League semi final. Mm. Yeah, you know ten, I mean? ten years. It was ten years. Two thousand eight since our last one. Arsenal need to make sure they not only get their manager, but and even if it is Arteta, he can still get you can still get players. It's Arsenal. That's fifty million you mentioned when I heard that earlier. It stunned me. Mm-hmm. That's not going to get them anywhere near top four. No, it's not, not like unless near. they're talking about Arteta and Vieira and. You know, or and building something, you know, who knows what, like, but building something from the ground up and taking five years, taking three to five years, yeah, and that's fair enough, but or building something with Murdersacker at the at the head of their academy and Yogi Lowe coming in, you know, to work with them and be committed to doing that for for that. They're still going to need to chuck more than fifty million at it. Yeah, but you know, yeah. That might be their way of thinking. Who knows? But yeah, it's, it is interesting times at Arsenal. We'll get Jake on um, next week. Uh, hopefully, Arsenal are doing very well in Europa League at that point, and he's he's a happy boy, and he can fill us in more. Maybe maybe there might be a decision from Arsenal then, or might know closer to what's going on. But this week there was also the Champions League semi-finals. Uh, last night, Real Madrid do what Real Madrid do in the European Cup. Uh, the most boring semi-final in the world. With poor quality, poor mistakes everywhere. I think Marcelo scored a cracking goal, but had one of the worst left back performances I've ever seen. Mm. Just, uh, 
I don't think he was playing left back. He, he, he had one unbelievable touch, which he stopped from the air, and that was amazing. But the rest of the game, he was... And his goal. Complete, and his goal was class, yes. The rest of the game, he was just... You know, no worries, I know he's at fault for Bayern Munich's goal. Yeah, he didn't even didn't track back, he just nah, sort of... About the rebound. Ambled back in, in the Bayern half. Bayern weren't great either. No. <laughs> they probably edged it, even though they got beat. They edged it and also felt sorry for them a little. Because um, of injuries. Because of the injuries. Yeah. I mean, missing Vidal, Alaba, um, you know, Robin went off injured, they're missing Coleman, um, then somebody else went off injured. Uh, I can't remember who at the minute, but, you know, hit with so many injuries and they need at least two of those players back for the second leg. I think they're going to have Alaba back. Alaba and, and Paisley. They need Coleman, or I don't think Robin's going to be back by the looks of his injury. Uh, they need they just just the mistakes like that goal for Asensio. Asensio was class when he came on, but you can't give him a sniff. You can't give him a no. bit of sniff. Remember, that's probably the worst performance in a semi final they've had where they've won a game, <laughs> and they were just ruthless. Yeah, Ronaldo was anonymous. Yeah, um, he was. Modric was poor giving passes away, which yeah, you never see. Yeah, Kroos was absolutely anonymous too. Um, but they know, still won. They just, just do what they do. Yeah. And you have to admire them for it. Oh, I. Zidane, you know, also made a quality sub when he brought on Asensio yeah. because, um, and then there was there was sort of that period where Vasquez was playing right back and I didn't know what was going on. But I thought he had a really brilliant second half. Yeah, yeah. Like the first five, uh, Reber went at him once or twice and you thought, uh-oh. Yeah, yeah. He's in trouble. And he was looking around at Varane and Ramos going, what do I do here? Um, but he studied him, said he almost, you know, studied him, and you know, he was great in the last 20 25 minutes. Um, but that could be just the effect of playing for Real Madrid and just having to get away with stuff and be at the right moment, the right time. I thought Sergio Ramos was fantastic in the second half, actually. yeah. The, you know, Kenan Navas gets a, a kick in two in the media and on social media. He's look, he's not he's not the world's best goalkeeper. I think he knows that, but and he was at fault for that goal. That was a that was a mistake by him the way he dove forward. But he took crack and see us after that as well. He's a great shot stopper. He is, he's a cat. He just flies around that goal. But you know, uh Real Madrid hierarchy They'll improve that in the summer, like Yes. They they'll either be Chelsea's number one or United's number one. Yeah. Um, um, or it could be Roma's number one, and we'll talk about Roma in a minute. Yeah, but all that, um, just as a side note, I thought Courtois not being in the squad um, for Chelsea's game... Um, Against it happen? Yes. Mm-hmm. Was a sure sign that something was going on. Something's wrong there. But, have you heard about the Wilmots thing? Nope. Well, that's why it is. Um, he, basically, Courtois and his father are suing Wilmots for libel. And the Belgian Football Association because they think, Wilmots especially, thinks that Courtois' father released tactics uh, <laughs> from Euro 2016. Yeah. What? This is true. Um, I hope people to, are this is unreal. To the media. Um, the Belgian media? Or just the, just the media in general. Um, French media, I think, maybe was, was what um, was said. But... Uh, obviously Kirk was the name why would he do it for a start <laughs> he's Belgian um, and now there's a whole lawsuit opened up uh, I think that the two never got on really um, is this because Wales hockey them and Robson, Robson Canley scored an unbelievable <coughs> goal and now Mark Wilmot is throwing dummies out yeah Huh, there you are then. So that's one to watch but so Kirk was caught that, up in that oh right so do you think he was away there or something yeah. or because he released a big statement then on the social media feeds um not about be- not being in squad, it was nothing to do with Chelsea, but it was basically about uh, you know the whole lawsuit. And, and he's not the cup goalkeeper for Chelsea anyway, so no. maybe Conte said, you know, listen, we don't need you for the bench, go and deal with it. Yeah. Um, You'd hope that if Conte does leave, that he, he manages to keep the likes of court, get a court order to stay and not just burn bridges all around him, take Chelsea down. And Hazard, I mean, who was absolutely. Fantastic. Yeah, it was a stunning performance. I've watched it back; like it was a stunning performance by Eden Hazard. Right, um, I really don't want him to go. Like. No, uh, I'm sure you don't. Like, <laughs> um, I have that feeling at the minute watching Mo Salah. Yeah, um, and we'll talk about Liverpool now. Um, we will touch on what happened, unfortunately, to Sean Cox. Um, and sort of, I want to sort of talk about the way people have been sort of 
reacting about it on social media in a minute, but um, Liverpool against Roma on Tuesday night was an exciting. Um, that was a bit wild. Yes, that was a bit wild. Um, I don't really know how. I f- I, pff, it's hard to feel like. I don't feel bad about it. I don't feel like deflated. I, I didn't feel deflated at all. In the thirty minutes, either thirty to forty minutes, either side of half time is the best ever, and as the best I've ever seen Liverpool play. And I'm not saying like they were like Holland of the seventies or Ajax on the Cruyff or Barcelona on the Cruyff or then Barcelona on their Pep. I'm not saying any of that nonsense. Um, like the football, they weren't like re or reinventing football. It was just like it was so relentless. Yeah. Do you know what? I, I actually have never felt a buzz or a high watching Liverpool like it. I, mean, I was just I felt like I was floating, just a pure adrenaline watching it. Like so, yeah. when I was in Belfast watching it, yeah, um, they just they just didn't give Roma a chance for forty minutes. They just wouldn't let them out, and like even the fifth goal summed it up because uh, Gonalans just booted the ball out for a corner because he he couldn't be bothered to do anything with it anymore. No, like. Where do I turn? Like, you know, what else do I do here? And then we scored from it. Um, Firmino and Salah are the only players to ever score two and assist two in a Champions League game. <laughs> and it wasn't the same game, which is mad. What, what, you're a neutral. Like, what, what do you think of the match? Well, <clears throat> I am a neutral, but knowing, you know, the team and, and the players, uh, obviously playing in the Premier League, you naturally, ha- and knowing Liverpool supporters like yourself and, and others, um, you naturally have a, you know, you want them to do well. Like you, know, you know, people will say like, oh, we don't want any other English team to do well. There, are, you know, but not for me. Like you know, well, we're we're going to be family in about seven months. So you yeah. kind of have to be then on like. Um, but when you see it, you sort of get caught up in it, and I think it's it's great. Like you know, I want them to win it now. Yeah. Um, and I've only come to that it took me a while like, I only come to that after that first leg there do you know what I mean before I would have been happy for Real Madrid to win and Ronaldo just because I absolutely love him like, yeah but, that's fair enough um, he's won it enough like, he got enough <laughs> yeah he won enough Cristiano <laughs> yeah. sling your hooks on um, but just the fact that you know everything surrounding it too you know Salah is just so nice like he's just such a nice man like and he is absolutely unbelievable <laughs> I cannot believe that Di Francesco and his Roman uh, army decided to play such a high lane. <laughs> After really, they, for the first 20 minutes, like they were a much better team. They looked like the team that we're here to play a European semi final and you aren't. Mm. Liverpool sort of were a wee bit cagey first 20 minutes and they quietened the crowd down. Yeah. Then Mane had his big chance that he missed and the crowd were like, nah, hang on, nah, look at that space, lads. Yeah. And it was almost as if Liverpool were all like, look at all this space. I thought James Milner was absolutely unbelievable, and so was, that was the best I've seen Jordan Henderson play for the Liverpool Football Club. And Milner, like most assists ever in a Premier League campaign Ch- or a Champions League campaign, it's not just wild. Like. It's all right, but it, it's wild. But when you're able to pass it to Salah and Firmino and Mane, it does help a right. little bit. That's true. Um, I thought he was able to drop in a little bit deeper, and it was it was given like uh, Van Dijk and Trent Alexander Arnold. Opportunities to Trent and Arnold could pass a football. Mm. And I was giving him opportunities to stray passes. And I know afterwards, like De Rossi and a few of the Roman players were all like, they played loads of long balls. Eh, of course you did, you morons. You had like 50 yards of space behind us, and we've yeah. got two absolute fly machines that can run at you. And then Bobby Firmino, that he'll pick these apart if he gets a chip. Salah's finish for the second goal I was talking about because of lovely chip. But Firmino's pass, I could watch it all day. Yeah. I mean, it was just perfect. It, it was as if he, he sat down for ten minutes and measured everything out. You know. Yeah, it was like yeah, it was like an architect has sort of drawn this out. And yeah. Going to do with it. Yeah. And just shaped it perfectly, and that was a really an example of the highest of lines in the world. You know why do that? Like it makes absolutely no sense. Um, and then it just got chaotic from there. Yeah, I think Roma maybe lost the run on themselves a wee bit too yeah. and realised that at probably 4-0 we need to you know stop this somehow and let it run on to 5-0 and then just unfortunately for Liverpool um, they conceded to well second one arguably not a penalty 
first one, Lovren just sort of loses concentration. Completely loses flight of the ball, yeah. Um, and it does, it just gives Roma a glimmer of hope. Gives like, him a sniff. Gives yeah. him a sniff. Um, because they obviously they haven't conceded at home yet in the, uh, the Champions League and they've, they've scored three goals at home against Chelsea um, and Barcelona mm-hmm. and they obviously need three goals to, score, to go through against Liverpool. I just I, I, I think we'll score. I think so, it's good too. Um, for Roma to go through, they might need the four or five goals. Um, and you know what? Like If that happens, obviously I'd be devastated, but for a to them, yeah. uh, I just... I think I think we'll win out in Rome. We're unbeaten in the Champions League. Win the game. I think we'll win the tie. I think we'll score a couple um, and win the tie. But just before we go on, I just want to talk about uh, Sean Cox, who uh, obviously was a Liverpool fan from Meath um, that um, was attacked um, by two Roma fa- well yeah by Roma fans and there's been two fans arrested and charged. Um, Today, just before we come on here, it was announced that Sean has actually been put into an induced coma uh, until Monday at least. Um, uh, without trying to make this about myself, I, I was in, watching the match in a, in a bar in Belfast with some friends and it came up on Twitter that there's been trouble outside Anfield. Like, my old fellow was at Anfield and trouble was outside the cop and that's where he was. Um, and then I seen images coming up and it was uh, an older man and he is an older man my dad uh, sorry Dave but you are um, he's a pensioner and it was an older man uh, wearing brown shoes navy jeans and a coat just like his and I like just was stunned could feel myself getting very angry and then I was trying to text dad to see what had happened and about four or five minutes later which felt like about an hour he texted saying I'm inside I'm in the cop um, there was trouble outside, but we got away from it. Um, unfortunately, there has been someone who's been seriously injured. Uh, Sean Cox, uh, re- heart goes out to his family. He's a dad, he's a brother, he's an uncle, he's a son. Uh, he went to watch Liverpool play a football match, and we don't know now what's going to happen. Hopefully he can pull through. I just, as much as the, um, that obviously was horrific and heartbreaking to see that happen, I just think the way some people... In the media and some people on social media, even people that will be watching this, I know for a fact or listening to it, that were putting snidey comments about it, um, talking about how uh, never the victim, always their, always the, always their fault. Um, but Liverpool fans, which you know is aimed at Hillsborough, like so, there's really no point in saying that. That's just terrific. And saying about how like um, oh, you, you, Eamon Dunphy said that this was going to happen because Liverpool fans threw bottles at the Man City bus. That was nothing to do with Roma. Uh, I've seen other fans from other clubs, doesn't matter what clubs they're from to be honest, saying um, you, this is what you were going to get because you're acting the big lads last time. No, it isn't. Nobody, nobody goes to a football match to get put in that coma and have a serious head injury. You don't go to football to, to fight. I've seen some people are saying that that's what you do. It's football and all and you turn up with your firm and have a scrap. No, you don't. Morons do that, but not football fans. Um. And there's an, an article today, yesterday, by Colin Maffin, um, yeah, in the Daily Express, who you'd be surprised to know he used to write for the Sun, Brenton. Okay. Um, and he wrote about how um, I should be, be surprised that this has happened basically at a Liverpool game because of Liverpool's history. He also managed to try and merge in what happened at Heisel um, to what happened at Hillsborough. Heisel was a criminal act. There were 14 people, I think, arrested him. There were seven definitely charged, I think for um, assault and the death of 39 um, Juventus fans, which is completely horrific. But Liverpool fans have never said that, you know, we didn't do anything and wash their hands of it. There's this narrative that we did do that. That didn't happen. You had people as well that even saying to me about it, I wasn't born until 1988, you morons. So I wasn't there, Hazel. Do you know what I, mean? I, I just find the whole thing, when something like this happens, as, football, as sports fans, we have a responsibility to actually be, think about things. You're saying stuff on social media and you're writing stuff like this here and someone's dad is in hospital fighting for his life. Yeah, it's not about any of that. It's no. about, you know, this man and hopefully you'll be able to pull through. But, um, you know, all that nonsense that surrounds it sort of pales in, in the insignificance. Like mm. when, when you actually, as you say, we're in a very sort of um, 
do it now culture and people are tweeting just when it's just looking at reactions all the time their head, you know what I mean? yeah, yeah. Um, you know they jump on a hashtag or whatever it is um, and they don't think about you know this man you know he's lying there fighting for his life um, so thoughts go out to him and family and hopefully he can pull through but um, you know the football really takes second place yeah I, I look so, some Roma fans have I I, I they'll be my Italian team I, I like watching Roma and I have done and I have a Roma top so it feels a bit weird having a Roma top now with what's happened but um, they've, they've been in trouble a lot of times now Roma fans some of their fans a small minority of their fans seem to be just loving this ultra culture where they take it too far and they'll go for scraps with fans that needs to be knocked in the head I think Roma I don't think anything's going to happen for this semi-final but I think something needs to be looked at with Roma going forward maybe they're a year where there are no fans, no away fans are allowed in the games or something like that there, or constantly just a year of European games where there's no fans allowed in their stadium and they're not allowed no fans to go to the away games, something like that. Just uh, slow it all down a little bit. And not just Roma fans, any time this happens to any club, uh, that's maybe the sanction now that what happens. Yeah, We saw it a wee bit with Celtic fans as well. And, you know, I don't mean, that's obviously separate, you know, run onto the pitch and, and the rest of the security needs to be looked at. Um, but it's bad when five, six days, six days before the second leg of the Champions League semi final, Liverpool officials are having to go out to Italy to make sure that the security is okay, which yeah. is happening at the minute. Shouldn't happen. I mean, I, if I had a ticket for that, I'd sell it to, I wouldn't sell it to another Liverpool fan, I'd sell it to um, back to Roma or something, and hopefully I'd give it to someone and sort them out because I wouldn't, you wouldn't want a Roma fan obviously in the way in, but uh, I, I don't particularly want. Liverpool fans going over to be honest I, I just have a funny feeling um, that unless it's really probably nipped in the bud um, that you know there'll be more nonsense and like you'd be feared being a Liverpool fan walking around Roma now because obviously that was an, un, was an unprovoked attack yeah. in Liverpool so what's going to happen Rome's a bigger city um, so I, I wouldn't be going anywhere near the game but uh, I, I, I think um, the game really doesn't matter when that's what happened to Sean and hopefully we have some Really positive news about Sean on um, Monday, and hopefully at the end of May he's able to watch Liverpool play in the European Cup final. Um, our producer Matthew is trying to get us to wind up here. Uh, Matthew, you won't say hello, but everybody say hello to Matthew. Um, just before we go, we're not really going to get to talk about the relegation battle. Hopefully next week that will maybe... I'm being biased here, I want to talk about Real Hopefully next week that will have got even more dramatic, um, because a couple of teams are going to be playing each other in the relegation battle, so that's going to be mad. But yes, Real Oviedo, unfortunately they're at the weekend, folks, eh, they're beat 2 1 by Valladolid and they deserve to get beat 2 1. It was one of those where it was just a really, really bad performance. Um, you'll not be surprised, Brenton, to know that there's someone else now leading Segunda. Uh, Rayo Valcano are now leading Segunda uh, on 67, with Sporting Nihon and Huesca on 65 just behind them. Real Oviedo are on 56 points and now they've dropped to 7th in the league. But on Sunday, and it's live on Free Sport for free viewers, and I think you can get that on Sky as well. They're playing at half eleven away to Numantia, which should be very tasty. Which is a humongous game, um, in Segunda, especially for playoff spots. It's, it's absolutely massive. Lose that, and we are betoed for playoffs. But yeah. win that, and we go above Numantia. Because just looking at that, yeah, you, you definitely well, you jump into the playoff places for start like, and then. Um, Yeah, we jump into the playoffs and then we... Yeah, just by, like three places. Yeah. <laughs> it's wild. It's absolutely bonkers. The Segunda is... Uh, it's my favourite other league. Um, I think because... And I'm not going to claim that I watch all the games or anything. I just like uh, sort of watching snippets of what's happened and then seeing the table change every week. Yeah. Which is lunacy. Um, there's also a couple of big games in Premier League this week. Arsenal are actually playing Manchester United. Yeah, and Mourinho's come out and said how much he respects Wenger, and it's all rosy um, at the minute mm-hmm. between the two um, until hopefully Sunday when there's a bit of scrap again. Um, I don't like the nicey niceies too much. Like. It's not really, it doesn't really suit him. No. Um, Just before we go, uh, who's going to, this time next week, we're sitting down, who's going to be in the Champions League final? Real Madrid and Liverpool. Okay, I will um, 
I will not say who I think. I think I think, who do you think are the other time? I think Liverpool will be in the Champions League final. Um and I think uh I think Bayern Munich will be the other team in the Champions League final. I don't think so. I th- after what happened to Real Madrid against Juventus but in the Bernabeu, I, I think Bar- Baron, you know, yeah. Thomas Muller, Lewandowski, James Rodriguez going back to the Bernabeu. All three were absolutely anonymous. Yeah, even Muller and Lewandowski ran into each other. Yeah. That's goal. It wasn't great. But um, as always, thanks for watching or listening as it'll be up on a podcast. Um, there'll be a couple of things coming up uh, tw- this weekend. I'm gonna, I've got an article that I have sort of already wrote in my head that I'm going to write about. Um, and we'll have some interviews coming up towards the end of the next weekend uh, with some special guests or maybe just one guest. We might have to wait a couple of weeks. But yes, yeah, stay tuned. Uh, keep following us on our social media pages at The Sports Babble and you can get us on YouTube as well where all our contact goes. Um, and if you're downloading podcasts on iTunes, rate us. And if you don't have an iPhone, I use Podcast Addict. It's probably the best. But um, Brenton, thanks for coming on. Pleasure. Um, producer Matt, thank you for producing. He won't, he won't say anything. Uh, Pleasure. Thank you uh, for everyone for watching and listening. Good luck.